Hello students, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the development of palate. Now, from this topic, you have this question, write down the embryological basis of cleft palate. So, when you are having this question, cleft palate, what you have to write down, that we will discuss today in this lecture. So, students, when you will have the palate, palate develops from the two sources, primary palate and secondary palate. And primary and secondary palate fuse together and they will form this definitive palate. Now, this definitive palate is actually a membranous palate and later on in this definitive palate, there is a ossification process occurs and under the membranous ossification, you will have the formation of hard palate and the part of that definitive palate which not ossified form the soft palate, clear? So, you will have primary palate and secondary palate they will fuse to form definitive palate. Definitive pa palate is a unossified membranous area. Now then, this definitive palate undergoes the membranous ossification. Almost the three-fourth part of this definitive palate ossified to form the hard palate and remaining one-fourth unossified area is going to form your soft palate. Clear? So now, what is primary palate? So, primary palate is a unpaired structure and it develops from the pre-maxilla and it is a part of frontonasal process, clear? Now, if you will remember my class of your development of the face, I told you initially there is a formation of five swellings around the stomodium. From the above, you will have a swelling is known as frontonasal process. Now, in this frontonasal process, when there is an appearance of nasal placard, there is a formation of two swellings. One is known as medial nasal and another is known as lateral nasal prominence. Now, both the medial nasal prominence join together and they will form the intermaxillary segment and that intermaxillary segment is going to form premaxilla. So, I told you that when the both uh, medial nasal uh, eminence fuse together, they will create a palate which is not visible from outside because this projection will go inside. And this projection which is arising from this intermaxillary segment of frontonasal process is known as primary palate. Now, what is secondary palate? Secondary palate is a paired area and secondary palate arises from your part of the first pharyngeal arch which is known as maxillary process. So, they comes from the maxillary process. So, what is the source of your uh, definitive palate? Primary palate comes from frontonasal process, secondary palate comes from maxillary process. Both of them will join together to form the definitive pal palate and unossified part of the definitive palate remain as a soft palate and ossified part form the hard palate, clear? Now, what about the primary palate which you have to write down? So, you have to write down the same thing which I just told you that when there is a formation of the frontonasal process and on this frontonasal process, you will have the appearance of the nasal placard and later on these nasal placard surrounded by the two elevations and these elevations are known as medial and lateral nasal prominence. Now, these both side medial nasal prominence fuse together and their fusion is going to form intermaxillary segment. And this intermaxillary segment gives a shelf-like projection from its deeper part and that midline deep surface shelf is known as primary palate. Now, this primary palate carries your central upper four incisor teeth and when this part ossify, it form the premaxilla. Clear? So, these are the three lines which you have to write down that primary palate develops from the intermaxillary part of frontonasal process. Second thing, this part arises from the deep surface and it carries the four central incisors and it is going to form your premaxilla. Now, the next part is secondary palate. Now, in this diagram, what you are able to understand that you are having the pair of your maxillary processes and these maxillary process are the part of first pharyngeal arch. So, maxillary process are present here around your upper part of this developing jaw and here you can see these are your maxillary processes. Now, these maxillary process will give rise to a inner shelf like projections 
and these shelf like projections are going to form your secondary pellet. So, for the formation of the secondary pellet what will happen? There is a formation of shelf like projections which are arising from the inner side of maxillary process. But dear students you have to understand that your hard pellet is a horizontal pellet but in the intraembryonic life it is not horizontal initially the pellet processes are going downward towards the developing tongue. So, here if you will see that this is your developing tongue area and this is the inner side of your maxillary process and these projections you can see they are going downward and they are present right now along the lateral side of developing tongue. So, initially these shelf like projections which are arises from the inner side of the maxillary process are facing downward in direction and these shelf are known as lateral palatine shelf clear. Now, later on what will happen that these shelf will become horizontal. So, later on as the growth is there what will happen that these shelf become horizontal and then they grows towards each other to fuse and their fusion is going to form your secondary palate clear. So, in this so in this diagram what you are able to understand that these are your downward directed palatine shelf later on these shall become horizontal and once they will become horizontal they will fuse with each other and here what you are able to see in this diagram that this is a projections which is coming from the inner side of your developing intermaxillary area. So, this is your primary palate and these are your shelf and these shelves later on become horizontal and then they will their fusion is going to form your secondary palate clear. So, these are the two palates and you have to write down their sources. Now, there is a formation of definitive palate. So, how the definitive palate is formed? The formation is occurs by the fusion of primary palate and secondary palate and both these palate form by a Y shaped suture and their point of fusion is marked by a fossa or foramen which is known as incisive foramen. So, in this diagram when you will see what you are able to understand that when the fusion will take place. Now, this line is here which is a Y shape line and this Y shape line is representing the fusion of all the three part to horizontal shelf of the secondary palate and this posterior projection of primary palate clear. Now, dear students in this image you can appreciate all these changes. Now, here what you are able to understand that this is the your first part or you can say the maxillary process clear. From the maxillary process here you can see that this small projection of the palatine shelf has been arised and simultaneously what is happening that this is your intermaxillary area and from this intermaxillary area there is a small projection has been uh, arises in the posterior direction which is going to form your primary palate. But dear students simultaneously what you are able to appreciate that from the above a projection is coming downward which is going to form your nasal septum. So, when these two horizontal plates are going towards each other you can see the plates has been enlarges here and simultaneously this nasal septum also become more prominent. Now, what will happen when finally, there is a Y shape fusion will take place here you are not able to see this area why? Because we know that nasal septum lies superior to the hard palate. So, when the two uh, horizontal palatine shelf will fuse each other their midline portion is actually going to accommodate the nasal septum on their superior aspect clear. So, when you are writing the formation of the definitive palate you should keep this thing in mind that you cannot forget to keep this uh, point that nasal septum is also growing downward in the midline and when the fusion of these two horizontal plate will take place there this midline area is going to accommodate this midline structure which is known as nasal septum clear. Now, what is going to happen with the definitive palate? You know that definitive palate is going to form your hard palate and the soft palate. Now, for that what you need? You need the ossification. So, the anterior three fourth part of your definitive palate get ossified and this ossified area is known as hard palate. 
while the posterior one-fourth part is remain unossified and this unossified area is going to form your soft palate. But dear students, the question comes is that suppose this is your definitive palate, then why only this three-fourth area is become hard, not this one-fourth area? So the answer is that because the nasal septum attaches only along this three-fourth area on their superior surface. So if the nasal septum attaches on the whole length of your developing palatine palate, then what will happen? The whole palate will get ossified. Clear? So the area of the nasal septum which present in the upper three-fourth part of your anterior area of the uh, definitive palate get ossified, remaining posterior one-fourth part of your definitive palate is not having the nasal septum. So that is why this part is not ossified. Now this part will get ossified and this is the important thing to keep in mind that as the nasal septum is not get its attachment to the whole length, that is why the complete ossification of this membranous palate or definitive palate is not there. Clear? Now, what is the development of the muscles of soft palate? Now, when you will see the muscles of soft palate, they are derived from the invasion of mesoderm. Now, you know there is a one muscle is known as tensor veli palati. It comes from the mesoderm of the first pharyngeal arch. It is supplied by the mandibular nerve. Then you will have other muscles of soft palate like levator veli palati, palatoglossus, palatopharyngeus, musculus uvuli, all of them comes from the mesoderm of fourth pharyngeal arch. Clear? Now we will move to the applied anatomy that is your cleft palate. Now this is the most common question of this session. So my dear students, when we are talking about the cleft, you have to understand that cleft means non-fusion of the segments of a definitive palate. That means if the two horizontal shelf will not fuse with each other, there is a presence of a fissure. If primary palate will not fuse with the secondary palate, there is a defect. So when we are talking about the cleft palate, it occurs because of the non-fusion of primary palate and secondary palate. Along with that, if there is a non-fusion occurs of with the nasal septum, you also have the fissure in your hard palate. Clear? So what is complete cleft palate? Now, when we are talking about the complete cleft palate, that means the cleft is involving both primary as well as the secondary palate. Now, when we are talking about the Y-shaped suture, we are actually talking about the fusion of this primary palate with the two horizontal part of your secondary palate. So here you can see that one arm of the Y is visible here. And this one arm here is creating the defect and this midline area is also open. That means it is a complete cleft. So the complete cleft occurs when there is a non-fusion of the lateral palatine processes. Now what is lateral palatine processes? Lateral palatine processes means these projections which are arising from the inner side of these maxillary processes. So when these lateral palatine processes fail to fuse in the midline, you will have the cleft in the hard palate. Then what is happening in the complete cleft? There is also a non-fusion of the processes with the primary palate also. So where is the primary palate? This area is the primary palate. So if you will see in this diagram again, what you are able to understand that there are two places where you have non-fusion. One is the area of this which is between the two lateral uh, shelf and there is a one more area and which is here it is between the primary and secondary palate. So that is known as complete palate. Now complete palate can, complete cleft palate can be unilateral or bilateral. So if this defect will go in, on this direction also then it is known as bilateral complete cleft. Clear? Now the cleft may be incomplete depends upon the site of non-fusion. Now in this image you can see that the cleft is not present in the anterior part. That means the primary cleft completely fuse with the both right and left palatine shelf. But these shelf fail to fuse 
in posterior part. That's why there is a cleft present in the posterior part of hard palate as well as there is a cleft in the soft palate. Clear? So, what is the meaning that if you are having the defect in the fusion of two palatine shelf, there is a cleft. If there is a failure in the fusion of primary and secondary, there is a cleft or if the nasal septum fails to fuse with the superior aspect of the two uh, horizontal shelf, there is a cleft. Clear? So now, at the end of this session, what you are able to understand that when we are talking about the development of the cleft, we need the two sources. One source is known as intermaxillary segment, which is a part of frontonasal process. Second, we need the uh, two palatine shelf, which are coming from the inner side of your maxillary uh, process of first pharyngeal arch. And later on, all of them will fuse together to form the definitive palate and the part of the palate which get ossified from the hard palate and part of the palate which will not ossify from the soft palate. And if these three segments will not fuse with each other, then definitely you will have a formation of the cleft in your palate. So this is all for the session. Thank you.